Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. And Me Crafty Scrapper creates over on Facebook. That's my business page on Facebook. And today we are looking at uh, the July e club kit and then we're going to make a project with it. Um, Y'all always seem to love, there goes my phone, y'all seem to love um, the projects that I make with the eClub kit and I like um, doing things with it so that I can show you different stuff that you can do with your kit each month. Um, it's not a card making kit, it's not a journal making kit, it's a kit of like products that go together. I'm not going to say match because everything's not going to be matchy matchy, but they go together. They are very cohesive and you can make anything you want with it. So um, if you're looking at becoming a member of the eClub kit, um, don't be scared away of it think you thinking that it is a card making kit or you thinking that it is just for journaling it's not but you know i tend to make journals you can make whatever your heart desires with the eclip kits and um, that's the way we have always done them we have never made them um project pacific specific i almost said pacific like the ocean um this month, now I'm missing, I think, a couple of things. Maybe one thing. I don't know. Buttons, I know. There were buttons in this kit. By the time my kit was put together, no buttons left. So, uh, and I have not fished out. I have buttons in my stash. I just hadn't fished them out. So, um, anyway, if you've got the July kit, you got buttons. Um, this is the Cartabella Flora number no. five collection. So, um, when I was picking out this kit, I went by the beautiful colors and the florals that are in this paper collection and picked out some cardstock for you to go along with it. Uh, usually you get two sheets of cardstock in your kit and then you get um, a six by six or a six by eight or sometimes we have actually done an eight by eight before also if the manufacturer can you know cut us a sweet deal we can get uh, a bigger paper pad but this paper pad is so pretty. I love those florals. And with any great Cartabella collection, they're going to have some cut aparts in them, but all kinds of florals. Um, some of them a little with a little bit of the orangey kind of fallish kind of looking. We're we're getting closer that way here in the U.S., but it's still um, not a fall kit. It's um, more summery, late summer kind of colors in it. And I love that. Love the dark pinks. I'm not really a big fan of light pink, but I, I like these dark pinks. Cute, cute, cute stuff in here. So then it goes over again with the same look at that how pretty with the same uh patterns one more time in there so very pretty that's the six by six pad you get a uh, charm of some kind i think we tried to get everybody a little floral charm but there's a charm of some kind in there then there's some pom-pom trim of some kind in your kit and the reason i say of some kind is because sometimes uh, we can't get the exact same item for every kit but we get it very similar uh, then in this kit and this i believe is the first time we've ever been able to do this we included two packs of ephemera in this kit so um, there's some frames and tags, there's some ephemera, and then there is a pack of stickers. And they're kind of dimensional, so they're flat, but then they have this little bit of 
dimension on top. And this is from Kay and Company. It's not even the same um, manufacturer, but it goes almost identical with this kit. So I am very, very happy with how I um, picked out. <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. I'm patting myself on the back. Very happy with myself as far as getting um, some very nice coordinating things for this July eclip kit so um, there's ephemera and then uh, frames and tags so pretty stuff and I am thinking I want to make an altered book journal I've never done one of these and so we're gonna go along and learn together and it is going to be a mini because the pages, the signature in my journal is going to be book pages. Okay, so there, there's where the altered book comes in. I have 16 pages uh, pulled from one book. And if you're going along and you want to make one like this, whatever book you take your pages out of, it's not going to be the same size as my book. So, um... I will give you these measurements, but unless you want to just cut some coffee paper or coffee stain paper or whatever to this size to make this, um, your sheets will be different from whatever book you pull yours out of. So mine are five inches wide by eight and a quarter tall. And then we're going to fold them in half. So all of my sheets are going to be folded in half so see there's the mini part of this and then what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich these bad boys together and I'm not concerned if one is a little bit taller maybe than the other one um, I'm not looking for perfection here in my pages so what we're going to do to start off with this journal is we're sandwiching these together now we're not gluing them together yet because what I'm going to do is where my middle is, I'm going to fold over to almost that middle, but not over, you know, so it doesn't give me any kind of resistance. I'm going to fold over the tops of the one I have sandwiched and try to get the pocket part the same way but it's not a deal breaker if it isn't and then when you fold this together you've got a blank page here that we're going to do something with I'll show you in a minute and then when you open this up you'll have a pocket here and a pocket here so we're going to glue down these flaps and then we're going to glue it all the way across the bottom and then up on this part so we can have a pocket here and a pocket here and then this is the spine so it's going to get sewn into our journal like that and then we can decorate these book pages however we want to with some of that pattern paper or some of the cardstock or the die cuts or whatever. But um, I thought that this is a cute little idea to make altered book pages into a journal and have it as the signature in our journal. So I really love this, this idea. And so I'm going to start folding and gluing. And if you want to go along with me, just start folding and gluing. And when you get it all folded and glued, then you're going to have um, all of them put together. They're going to stack together. Dun, 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 dun. And we might do them back and forth and back and forth. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So fold in half. And then the next one, fold in half. Okay, and then what I'm talking about here 
is we would have these two and then we would have these two and I need to put them that way but just because I'm kind of crazy like that I want my book pages going the same way okay um, so then when you open this up you'll have inside pockets and then we're doing something to these and then you'll have inside pockets again now if you wanted to flip flop that and have the plain pages facing each other and not a pocket next you could do that too so you can turn them back and forth however you want to do it but then these next two I would find my middle make sure not to cross over that middle and then I would try to get the pockets even here I'm not going to be sad if they're not perfectly even and then sandwich those together okay so eventually we'll have a front and then when you open it up you'll have a pocket and then another one that we'll do something to and then you'll open it up again and you'll have another pocket eventually the middle of your signature will be two pockets like this and then you'll flip and you'll have a plain page and then a pocket page okay just like that so that's what I'm going to do then I'll come back and show you how I am uh, gluing those pockets together before we get that signature together there are all of my pages folded over like I want them and then sandwiched together. So I think that is just beautiful. I love that. I love how that looks. And it will be a nice little Pac-Man mouth. Um, like I said, I did 16 pages. So that's going to be, um, what, eight back and forth, back and forth, front and back um, on either side. So in total, we will have... What would that be 32 front and back on both sides so if you wanted it where it is not um, as pac-man mouth as mine is then you would need to work that out and do a few less book pages um, I'm going to get these glued together some of them and after I get that done are the folded over pocket is just a little bit taller than the page that it's going to be attached to and once I get that all glued down then I'll come back and I'll snip off the tops of those all of them are not like that because all of the pages are not exactly the same measurement but um, once I get all of them glued down I will take care of that and I want to make sure that none of these are getting all squished and squashed through here I've got my Barely Arts glue and I'm going to start gluing this all down and you will be able to see liquid glue through it um, when you put the book pages down but you know some of it is going to get covered up when we decorate so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to go take one off of my middle so see that top is going to be up above that a little bit when I get this all glued down and in place then I'll come in and um, trim that so what I'm going to do is put a line of glue try not to get it too thick of a line a line of glue all the way over up up and then right up the middle also and then line my book pages back up like so and just press those down Okay, then on these, I'm not going to glue them like 
I mean just like slather them with glue what I'm going to do is put a little dollop of glue on the corners and then this will get us some extra little tucks and things if we want them in our pages so what I'm talking about is I'm letting that dry for just a few seconds okay our page will be together like this I'm going to trim off that top little piece that's shooting off the top and then we have a pocket here pretty big pocket for a mini journal big pockets on both sides there and then you've got little tucks you got a tuck space here you got a tuck space here a little tuck space in there if you wanted to put something longer or some hidden journaling or something put it all the way back through there with a little tab sticking out of the bottom we'll do that on a couple of them that sounds wonderful I love that so little tuck spaces around on them too now if you want to glue them all the way down these flaps all the way down go for it by all means you make it yours but this is just what I'm going to do to mine so that's the first one and that's going to be my middle of my signature I'm going to turn it face down like that so that I don't get anything out of order because I have went in order with my page numbers I tore them out of the book in order mm -hmm. that's how crazy I am and I have put them in order so that's how we're doing this and then we're gonna let all of these dry while we make our cover oh a little bit down the middle here all the way up just so that we can have that defined middle where the spine is and whatever little goodies you put in these pockets they don't get lost down in the spine of your book when you make it and then my little circle dollop and another little circle dollop and press those down and then get all your creases good and down and then come in here after you fold it again if you've got any hang off from that folded over pocket you take care of that all right I'm gonna go through and do all of my pages like that all of my pages have been glued together and um, that is the middle there love it okay I'm gonna let all these dry I'm not going to trim down any of this I like how it looks I don't want to trim them down at all so I'm going to measure from the outside I'm going to pop these down just to make sure I'm good and lined up and I'm going to measure from the outside the furthest one that is sticking out to the edge and we've got about oh uh, one two little over four and a quarter and then five tall so I'm gonna make my yep I'm gonna make my cover five and a quarter tall five and a quarter tall by four and a half wide so five and a quarter tall I need to write that down and I want uh, this paper to be my cover my front cover paper so what I'm gonna do is just so that I've got plenty of strength on my covers I'm going to cut this green paper five and a quarter tall by nine wide 
And then uh, that's going to be covered up, so I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I will cover that up. I'm going to fold it in half. And even though I had measured my pages, um, I just wanted to put my cover over them to make sure. And it is good. Got enough width there that nothing's sticking out that I don't want to stick out. If I want to make some tabs and stuff, I can. And then we're going to make just some oblong side tuck pockets for the insides of the cover so that'll get covered up and I'm going to cut this paper uh, at a mat just like an eighth of an inch off of what the cover size is this is a little off there and they get get myself a good mat going of that paper and I think we've got another one in here the same pattern and I think I will just cover the back with that same paper because I love it it's so pretty uh, but I'm just going to cut a mat for that one and then a mat for the back one I'm not going to wrap it around you'll see the green on the spine and I'm good with that so fold it in half just to measure again we have four and a half by five and a quarter so I'm just going to go an eighth of an inch down from that measurement and, and there's our cover and if we want to ink around those we can. And I'm going to get my vintage photo ink and I am going to just barely go around the edges of these pattern papers. I want them inked, but it doesn't have to be anything crazy distressed. Just a little bit of inking to give myself some character to the covers. To get my bone folder and really crease that spine down. And then I'm going to get. my little craft knife and get that feathery edge off of there because my trimmer needs a new blade and I never remember it until after I've already started a video and don't really want to distress that I just want to get that the feathery bits off you can center this up how you want it and I'm going to go forward with it so there's going to be a little bit more of the green that you can see at the spine but I'm going to need that as far as um, sewing in my signature I don't want to mess up any of this paper so I'm going to go forward with it just a little bit and we're just going to glue that down okay then I need to sew in my signature and I got one of the journal cradles from the shop i did not already have one this is the butterfly journal table um i like calling it a cradle but anyway uh it is the butterfly journal table y'all know that uh, butterflies are one of mom's favorites and that is why we like a butterfly theme on a lot of our stuff and then there you have your journal table, your butterfly journal table. And then I have a little mini. This one holds, like you can see, a big one too. So place your journal in your little table, in your table cradle. And then get your all of choice, whichever one that you have. I have an old, old, old one. And then your wax thread or whatever you're going to sew it together with. Okay. And then this eliminates 
really having to use any of the uh, big paper clips or anything like I use, but to be on the safe side, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to clip this on here and then come over to this other side and clip that one on just to hold everything together while I'm getting this journal put together. Okay, so just like that, I want to do a hole down the middle and what did we say our height was? Five and a quarter. So I'm gonna go about there for middle. I do believe I'm not gonna be too sad if it's not perfectly in the center. But my little table cradle, look at there, is holding my journal in place so that I go directly through to the back and middle of that spine. So three hole binding system all, all the way through my journal and look on the back and look at there. We are all lined up. I'm going to put my cradle aside and then I'm going to get my three links. One, two, three with a little bit to grow on of my wax thread. I'm going to get my blunt needle and tie this signature in or sew, hand sew this signature in. Go in, inside to outside and then I'm just going to fold it up and push through and hope for the best. And look at there, it didn't come through the middle, so you got to take it out and then just work with it till you. And there it comes. Back through there, and then I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. and out. Now, I am working with book pages, so book pages can be fragile, so um, be easy with the poking and prodding as you do that. Go back up through the middle gently and hope that, oh yeah, look at there. And then back and forth and back and forth. just to make sure that everything is tight. And then I'm gonna close it up and look on the back and make sure it looks pretty tight there too. And then tie a knot. And then get myself a little piece of lace here. Just a little one for this one. It doesn't have to stick out like a bookmark. And tie that lace into that knot. That's two knots. I'm going to go for a third. Tie it really tight. And then I'm going to get my bone folder and press down on that knot a couple of times before I cut out my excess string there. Okay. And then take off my paper clips and I think I will leave these long, not this long, but I'm going to trim off just a little bit and leave those long so they can be uh, bookmarks if I want them to and it can 
hang out there and we can even put some little pearls or little charms on those if we want to um, or you can just trim it off shorter but that gives me a little more character to my journal there I like that so here's what we've got done so far we've got the cover uh, just covered not really decorated uh, we're needing to put in our oblong side tucks and then we've got our pages throughout beautiful and then here is our middle of our signature and then those pages out through there and then we need to get that oblong one there um, let's go ahead and do those inside pockets I like this daisy paper let's go two inches wide so I want it to go two inches wide and then of course my height of my journal is five and a quarter so let's go I'm gonna go two and a half because I want to put a gusset on these so two and a half wide so I'm going to give myself a half inch score line on the long side and then I need to get this paper down to five and a quarter there we go that's going to give me a nice pocket like that and I have scored it over and I just need to cut out my little um, squares there so I don't get too much bulk Okay, I'm going to put some score tape on my score lines. Okay, I'm going to ink the edge of this. And then I'm going to ink that fold over line there on the top, bottom, and side. and then put it into my journal so flip that over got those nice and stuck together and then I can line it up on the edge of my journal page or cover and make a funny noise uh, and then get my bone folder and crease that down really well so the score tape holds and look at that nice pocket and it folds out and it's going to hold lots of stuff I really like that I like that pocket so I'm going to do the same thing to the front And then I thought these beautiful stickers, we could put one on each of our inside pockets because they're just beautiful. And this one is just the right height for the middle of that one. We've got just a little bit of dimension on it, but not anything too crazy. And then this back one, maybe we can put this one here. And then with your buttons, of course, you could add some buttons to the front if you wanted to. Let's look at our die cuts for a um, nice decoration on the front here I 
And then I'm going to try something as far as the closure goes. I'm going to cut a two inch piece and I'm going to fold it in half so we have the same pattern on both sides. It's the same uh, paper that we're using as our interior pockets. So a two inch piece fold it over okay and then going to look at how much I need to trim off and we're going to a lot for growth of the journal so let's say the journal grows to about yay big so then my closure needs to be about that long. Let's see how long that is. It is three and a half. So I'm going to cut this three and a half. And then I'm going to glue this together. And I'm going to use a magnet as my closure to um, keep it closed on the front anyway. And the back can just be glued on. And we have right now we have two kinds of magnets in the shop, and both are super duper thin. We have some jumbo, some big ones, and then we have some little ones like I've got here. They are super duper thin, have a very, very thin profile. Okay, one is going to be hidden inside my come around, my little flap. So one's going to get embedded in there, and then all that will get glued together. Little 5 8 inch, and I'm going to get a piece of that same cardstock there, so that it all goes together, but it gets nice and hidden. So see how that, I'm going to put that on there like that. See, it's going to go like boop, boop, like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this one magnet. Make sure of which side, okay, it's that one. So I need to cover it on this side. I'm going to put some liquid glue. on that magnet and get it to the center a little more glue around the edges and glue that in place where I want it and I need to get in the middle and press that in really well to where I want that closure to be. And then you gotta let that dry. So what we're gonna do is we will glue this onto the back here. And then once that's dry, flip it around and get it to attach there. We don't want to pull that up yet. Get it to attach there and have our closure made. Um, I love this little bloom and grow piece from the die cut pack. So I'm going to just barely vintage photo ink the edges of it and glue that onto the cover here at the bottom. Simple, simple, simple decoration. Simple but pretty. 
Love it. Pretty. I really like that. Alright, I'm still not wanting to put that magnet on there yet, so we'll um, figure out placement for the back glue in a minute because what I want to do is first off um, get that attached there and then roll it around while it's still attached to that. Ooh, I almost did it. While it's still attached to that and then find my good spot to glue it on for the back. Um, on the inside, ooh, and let's put on a decoration on the outside of this closure band. You want to ink the edges of this. Okay, yeah, I'm going to put that little die cut there on the front of that. Just kind of protruding out off of it. A little bit that way so liquid glue and get that placed on there just a nice little looks kind of like a button nice little decoration there for the front of that and just make sure that you always put um, your magnets together like this before permanently gluing everything down because you want to make sure that you've got negative and positive on the correct sides so yeah I like that I like how that's coming together there love it when the plan comes together uh, before still before we glue it on the back I'm just letting everything glue there we'll get that taken care of in just a minute so for the insides here you can decorate these little pockets you can decorate the back side here put in some paper just right inside of each one of them but on these I think on this one I will just put some kind of pattern paper on the outside and you know have a decoration or whatever on the front one here and have it just matte so you can still see the book page because what's the point in using book page if you can't still see the book page right and then on these I want to do flip ups so we can have extra journaling space you can either do flip up you can do a flip out this way but I like the idea of flip up and I like the cohesiveness is that the way you say that cohesiveness of these pages so you've got blank that you can do whatever you want to to you can do a decoration whatever then you have pocket then you have blank again and then you have pocket and blank and pocket and blank all the way through so these journals come together so quickly when you know what's coming next you know what I'm saying so you're not having to do something um, that is spontaneous or random on each page they're very cohesive in nature as far as the signature goes and I like that about this little journal so let's go ahead and get whatever decoration we're wanting whatever pattern paper we're wanting on that first page now if you're going along with my measurements which I haven't given you very 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 precise <laughs> measurements on this one because like I said um, your book pages are going to be different sizes um, a different size than mine but if you're making a journal without the book pages just regular old copy paper or whatever and you're going along with me this uh, decorated piece that I'm putting on this front book page is three and three fourths by four and a half so that's how that is looking and I'm just going to get some liquid glue I put a little bit of uh, distress ink around the edges nothing too distressed and dingy looking but just a little bit and I'm going to put this on this book page and I like that a lot of the book page is showing around the edges I don't want to cover it all up that's why I use book page but now this front page of course will have most of the book page covered but then 
these so you can see that pattern paper through the book page. I love that. And then there are some cut aparts in there. I thought that these would be really cute put inside of the pockets. So there is that like that. And just popped in there like that. And if you want to cover up this upside down um, writing, you can. And let's put on a die cut or something there. We can add something in that pocket. And I think we're dry enough on the front. We can get that closure glued on. So there's a little die cut that we can put into that front pocket if we want to. It says thanks a bunch on it and um, that could be given as a um, card with a card or something like that. Or you can just cut off the bottom if you're not into making any kind of cards or sending cards and put your own little sentiment on it or just cover it up completely on the bottom with some pattern paper and add your own little sentiment. So that's just a few ideas you can use when um, trying to cover up something that might not be your little cup of tea. And there's another piece that can go down in there that's a little bit too big for our mini book that we've made here. I like this little banner. It says you are the best. And ink that up a little heavy. And put some liquid glue on the back. And add that to the top of that page. It's just a little decoration. And you could add whatever else onto that if you wanted to. You could put some coffee dyed paper there and make some journaling space if you wanted to do that. Let me get that excess glue off right there before we get all stuck together. And you could add a word sentiment there on that pocket if you wanted to. I really like how this is coming together already. And we've only done the first two pages. Isn't that cute? I love that. Okay, so for these, like I said, I want to do some flip-ups. And what I'm thinking is this same size will work. Let's make sure of that, though. Um, on these little tuck spaces that we left, you can tuck things up in there if you want to do that. You can tuck them that way. Of course, it'll have to be small little stuff, but that's just showing you that you've got those two tuck spaces. Let's cut a piece of this pattern paper. We could even do some of our solid cardstock that we got too. This purple is so pretty. And let's cut it at four and a half. by three and three-fourths. And then let's look at it on the page here. So yeah, that's a nice um, size there. And I don't think I want to round any of my corners. I like how this one is looking as is. So I'm not gonna start rounding corners or anything. Okay, then I need to um, make a little flip up for the back. So um, I guess if you wanted to, you could make this, um, let's say, four and three quarter tall, four and three fourths tall, and then score it, and you would have your little flip up. So I'm going to cut this three and three fourths. by one inch and 
and then I'm just going to fold it in half and I'm going to make that my gusset on the back for this flip up. Okay. There's that. I'm going to ink edges. I'm going to ink both sides because I don't know which side's going to show and which side won't yet. So let's just go ahead and ink both of them. Okay, and then I'm going to put, hmm, let's see, do I want to do it that way or do I want to do it this way and let that show on the inside there. Ooh, I like that. So let's do it that way. Let's put some liquid glue on the back side of that. And then we need to put it top of the tent up like that. So see if you just go ahead and cut your paper a little taller and make yourself a score line. You don't have to make you don't have to make a separate gusset. You can just do a score line and be done with it. But that does give me a nice little difference in color there. I'm going to make sure it's on there the way it should be and get all the excess glue out of there. And wipe that down. And then you're going to see the back side of this flip up. So let's ink that. Then I'm going to put liquid glue on the back side of my gusset. Back side of my flap, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to place it on the book page and then center it up on the book page the way I want it and then hold that down all right so front page more decorating easily can be done there you've got your first pocket with a little card in it then you have this beautiful floral paper that you can flip up just like that and put coffee dyed paper on the back there for journaling space or leave it as is you can put more paper here on this book page if you want to also but that is my little concept for this journal and i'm going to go on through and get the rest of these decorated and the pockets filled and then let's go ahead and get this closure glued so i just want to roll that around and then figure out, you know, how far back I want to put that. You don't want to have it sticking out too much here because then that'll buck there and it won't close. So you want to get that good and secure on the front. Hold that button magnet and then figure out where are you going to put that? So I'm going to put two kinds of glue and I get <laughs> a comment about this every time I use two kinds of glue. I'm using my Barely Arts and then I'm going to give me a little twirl of Fabrifix just so that I know we are good and secure. And I'm going to hold that down, come back around to the front, and make sure we don't have any puckering, and then put it on straight, and come up just a little bit like that, and come back around here and hold down. And then I'm going to let this dry, and then once that is dry, we'll be able to 
pop this off easily and close it easily just like that so a nice little closure to our mini book page journal and I'm going to decorate all the rest of those pages and then I'll come back and show you the final flip through and everything that I've added to those pages on the inside and here it is all complete I have everything covered and the charm that come in the kit I added that to the bottom to those um, where I had tied the wax thread and I'll show you that when we get to the middle of the signature but um, I think this is one of the cutest little mini journals I've ever made and this is the first time making a journal with just one type of paper in my signature and that was book page and I love it now of course bigger journals um, you wouldn't be able to do this because book pages are too small that's why I made a mini journal but um, you could totally do this with just coffee dyed or tea stain papers you don't have to have book pages and um, you could do larger um, journals with just regular paper too so um, the only things I'm seeing is we have so much bulk in here that my papers here are coming away a little bit so I'll need to come in and put some more liquid glue and then put this under a heavy something just so that sticks a little better it's just the back cover that I have trying to pop up just off the edge right there so my little magnetic closure is I mean strong as nails y'all that little button magnet is amazing even with all that girth in it and when I open it up you'll see how Pac-Man this thing is but that magnet is just holding strong so either of the little mini magnet button magnet magnets great goodness can't talk that we have in the shop work just like this so if you're looking for a new way or just needing some more magnets but a new way to close up your journals these magnets are it all right so open that up and then look how pac-man even standing it up but i love it if you are not wanting this much bulk in your journal I would go let's say instead of 16 pages do 12 pages but um, I would keep it at an even number of course because you have to um, sandwich them together so there's our first little pocket the long pocket remember we have gussets under this so it's going to hold quite a bit of stuff and then our first page is just decorating uh, decoration and um, we could add some coffee dyed paper on there if we wanted to if we wanted to journal on it next page um, on all of these pockets I just went through and put some of the scrap uh, that I had left over from each of the decorated pages I just went through and put some squares of scrap on there and then put some kind of little either a word phrase from my stash or a die cut from the die cuts we got in the kit or one of the stickers something and then these are the cutouts that are in the collection and then on these pages I decided to do some of them flip ups and then some of them just glued on so that you could write on so this is a flip up and I just decorated it with some uh, circle cutouts. So there's our first flip up. And then next page, um, I cut some of the pattern paper just to make an insert there. And there's another uh, square of scrap and then a die cut on top. 
this one is just glued on so plenty of writing space here with one of the stickers and I just added a little strip of the um, pattern paper that I had left over and I have just a little bit just a little pile of papers left this is all I have left out of all the papers that were in or card stocks that were in the kit so I have these scraps to add to my scrap pile and y'all know I love scrap pile so <laughs> so there is a good writing page and then the next one has just a die cut down in there we could put whatever we want to in the pockets but just to keep it decorative and then some paper this is a back side of one of the pages in that uh, pattern uh, paper pack and I love those polka dots and I put a um, word phrase from my or a word sticker from my stash and then one of the stickers from the sticker pack that we got and then this is just some of the cardstock that we got in the kit and it's showing up really really like a true red and it's more of a watermelon red and then this is one of the die cuts you could easily write in there you could write all around this and then I put on a word sticker and this is a flip up so that you can still see that beautiful book page back behind it and while I was um, off camera finishing all of my decorating, um, usually what I do when I'm in my scrap room and I'm finishing up, you know, some monotonous, repetitive stuff just so that I can get back to you and let you see the final product, I will um, listen to a book um, through Audible or um, my online free library uh, borrow that I have. Um, and I was doing that. So when I'm looking at these pages, I'm still thinking about that book that I was listening to. Like, oh yeah, I was on chapter so-and-so and she was doing so-and-so when I did this. So that's just a little rabbit trail I wanted to go off on to let you know about. Who knows why. <laughs> that's some more of the paper I just cut to insert into a pocket. That beautiful watercolor floral and then a um, circle I punched out there this is just glued on and it's got one of the um, stickers the floral stickers and it's yellow background so it would be easy to write on next one this one is very subtle and I didn't even ink that I need to ink that I thought I was getting every one of them but you know when you get wrapped up in a book that you're listening to <laughs> uh, I have got to update my um, book journal where I've um, been recording what I've read this year I haven't updated it in a while but I keep up with that on my Goodreads account um, if you are an avid reader, you need to be on Goodreads, goodreads.com. Um, you can get all kinds of ideas, um, all kinds of genres. If you are into a certain uh, genre and you don't want to read anything else, Goodreads will recommend um, certain books for you that's in that genre. And that's why I love it. And then you also get... Um, notifications when brand new books are published by authors that you love or genres that you love so I love Goodreads I love going on there and um, seeing what's new and then I also put into Goodreads what I've just read and I rate it and stuff like that um, leave my rating and or a review or whatever and that way I can keep up with it on Goodreads then I can journal about it later if I want to also because I can keep all my thoughts online on Goodreads. Uh, there is, that's a plug for them. I don't get anything from that, <laughs> but I will leave um, the Goodreads. I need to make myself a note to um, leave, leave Goodreads 
in the script box. That's the only way I can remember what I'm supposed to <laughs> leave links to from journal to journal. All right, and then um, a little square or rectangle of scrap paper, um, a word label, and then this little circle from the die cut pack had thanks or something written on the bottom of it, and I just covered it up with a word label. Um, Bloom and Grow, that's a die cut from the pack, paper from the paper pack, and a flip up there. And then next pocket, just some of the pattern paper. And then uh, this says hello on it. It was a die cut and then a, another square. Uh, this had a lot enough background that it would be easy to write on, uh, journal on. And then one of the dimensional stickers there. Some more of the pattern paper. But on this one, I flipped up this little piece here. Instead of cutting it off, I just flipped it up. So I made a little bitty, um, you know, skinny pocket at the bottom if we wanted to put anything there. And um, even some, like, hidden journaling or something we wanted to put down in there. It would have its own little pocket. Um, and then another little cluster with die cuts and scrap paper and a word sticker. This purple paper is beautiful and very easy to write on. I just inked up a little um, banner from the die cut and then that is a flip up. And then there's even a uh, journaling space here on this book page. Some more of the... Um, pattern paper cut and then the back has room for journaling and then this is the middle of our signature so you'll remember we did the little um, lace middle there that's kind of my signature when I'm making signatures and then that is the um, wax thread that we had left over and I put the charm at the end so then that just hangs out of the bottom. Uh, I, I had a comment that um, I had to remove and I had to ban the person who made the comment because they were very ugly. <laughs> they, I guess, were wanting to make a point, but they were very ugly about it, so I just banned them. But um, they commented on how I... Um, do that what I just did but that is a total habit for me when I'm thinking and trying to think of my next word or phrase I'm needing to say I do that it's just a habit so um, she was very annoyed by that and uh, told me to grow up so I <laughs> I apologize if that gets on anybody's nerves. It is a habit I don't even know I'm doing half the time. So I apologize if it gets on anybody's nerves. But um, I just didn't think there was any sense in um, being so uh, as ugly as she was. It was it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah, she told me to grow up. I don't I don't know what having a habit when you're talking is I, I I don't know she she even went so far as to make it out like I was trying to be uppity by doing that I don't I'm as southern as they come so I don't I don't really know what she was talking about but I didn't even reply to it I just deleted it and banned her from my <laughs> channel <laughs> oh me I'm I'm telling you some just get very offended by the silliest, craziest, tiniest things. I don't know. But I apologize if anybody is um, uh, not enjoying the way I speak. I, there's nothing I can do about that. And um, there's nothing I can do about a habit, really, that I don't even know that I do. So when you hear me go, 
it's because I'm thinking of what to say next. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, then there's some pattern paper there, and I matched, went really matchy-matchy with the center of my signature, and I put uh, two pieces almost the exact same size, and then put one of the banners from the die cut there, and then another little die cut there. And then we have a flip-up, happy day, and then some journaling space there on the edge of that book page and then we went matchy matchy here too uh, love you banner and then a die cut there friends are flowers in the garden of life is what that says so now we're um, flip flopping we had the pockets on the left side and then the plain page on the right side and now that we've come to the center of our signature we're flip flopped now we have the plain page on this side, left side, and then pocket on the right. And then, uh oh, we got something stuck together. There we go. Uh, some of the cardstock here with um, just a little piece of another paper, and then plenty of writing space there and there. This, it's, see, I just did it. So now I'm going to be very, very conscious of doing that. Thanks, woman. <laughs> so on this one, this is one of my favorite pockets. I love how that dimensional sticker looks. I love this paper. It says peace and then this matches that almost perfectly and remember those stickers didn't even come from the same company. Those are um, K and Company and the paper is from Cartabella so I really love how they match. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, next is a flip up, Bloom and Grow. And I got it. It's sticking just a little bit from that liquid glue. So unstick that. There we go. And then a little die cut on top of the scrap. And then look at that die cut. How pretty. Do small things with great love. I love that. Um, this you could um, cover up with some coffee dyed paper. That is some busy paper, so I don't know how well writing would show up, but black ink surely would show up well on that because there's no black in the background. Share Joy, a uh, little scrap of the watercolor florals there with a banner that says hello, a little piece of pattern paper there. And then we have a flip up here. The best moment, um, I almost said moments, memories. The best memories, and you could write all around that if you wanted to. Bloom die cut with some scrap. And a little card made out of pattern paper there. Uh, more of that beautiful yellow paper that is easy to write on. And a banner with green um, and then white daisies on it. Some more of that beautiful polka dot paper that was a back side of one of the pages with a um, circle punch out of some of that watercolor floral, um, a joy sticker, and another little card. And then this one is a flip up with room to journal here if we wanted to, room to journal on the back side and the front, um, but this one was a piece together one because I had ran out of the pattern papers, the full sheets, six by six sheets of the pattern papers. So this one is pieced together. So I've got some of the cardstock on top and then a strip of the pattern paper on the bottom to make my flip up size so I had to piece that one together and then added a um, die cut there a banner there look how pretty that banner is on that scrap of paper I love that and then another piece of pattern paper and then we get to the end and we have room on this back side 
to um, journal on. This is our happy place, a die cut that was in the um, packs. And then just a couple of die cuts put back here. But I'm thinking that these pockets would be so cute to have some um, coffee dyed or tea stained paper added into. Ooh, I love that idea. Let's go ahead and put a couple in there. This is some ink dyed paper. And I've just cut that in half. And let's see how we need to fold this, because of course that's too tall. We could fold it lengthwise and then fold it over once this way. And then put that back behind whatever die cuts we wanted to leave in there. I like that. Just give us a little extra something. And then fold in half. That way and this way. And then add that in there. So some extra journaling space there too. So I think this is a great little um, altered book mini journal and let me know what you think about it in the comments below and be sure to subscribe like this video and um, i will see you in the next video y'all have a great day god bless i love ya you are my people thanks for coming back again and again see ya bye y'all